Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum and a very good evening ladies and gentlemen viewers on our YouTube channel now going live. So hi, hello everyone. My name is Aisha binti Muhammad Hamdan and I'm from SMK Raja Permaisuri Bainun and we are here this evening for a very momentous event. It is an international virtual collaborative event and we are bringing you balloon debate. Okay, so honestly I'm very excited because I'm seeing now on YouTube uh, comment section yeah we have so many uh, students teachers people are talking about us and everyone is saying good luck conveying messages to your uh, your friends and also your students representatives and it is very much it's so merry because i'm looking at names from indonesia and vietnam and all so i'm very excited and i believe you are too so ladies and gentlemen viewers welcome to balloon debate 2021 and Tonight, this very evening, it is very special because we are bringing to you live 11 speakers, 11 participants from nine schools from four different countries and they are going to speak about endangered animals. So, let me just give a very quick information about what is balloon debate. Ladies and gentlemen, viewers, um, three weeks back when we blasted our promo on our balloon debate, we received so many questions from people around asking what is balloon debate? We've never heard of it before. So, what is a balloon debate? A balloon debate basically is about a team of speakers, okay, a group of speakers where they are going to get Get the approval from the audience to keep them alive it is like they are in a hot air balloon and the balloon is sinking it malfunctions therefore we have to throw some of our speakers in order to keep some others remaining to be alive okay therefore for tonight the theme is endangered animals we have with us 11 speakers beautiful students age 14 to 16 17 and they are already been assigned okay a different animal each we drew lots like two weeks back and there are 11 animals they are in the character of 11 different animals and all these animals they are endangered species so these animals okay it's now that these animals are traveling in a hot air balloon this hot air balloon is sinking and we need to get rid of eight animals leaving behind only three animals and all these 11 speakers are going to convince you why they should not be get rid of or why they should not be why they should be rescued and saved it's very interesting is that is the concept of a balloon debate yeah and um as i said earlier we are going to listen to these 11 beautiful speakers and i'm sure they're very much prepared and what animals are we having in the balloon let's listen to we're gonna have orang utan giant panda african forest elephant sea turtle polar bear white rhino vaquita armor leopard sumatran tiger saula and the western lowland gorilla wow some of them i've never even heard before but these are endangered species and i believe that our tonight's uh, event our tonight's program is not just about debating and also to be voted out or in but also for us to learn something from all these 11 amazing speakers about these endangered animals i'm sure you students especially and even us teachers we are going to learn so much from one another okay so as i said earlier we need to vote out there are 11 of them we need to vote out eight by the end of the night we are going to have three animals or three speakers, okay, who will remain alive in the hot air balloon. Who are they? Who will they be? I'm not going to be the determining factor, all right? You are. You, as the audience, as the viewers on YouTube Live, you are the one who will vote three students or three speakers or three animals to win this debate, this balloon debate, all right? No pressure there, yeah? And the best part is we feel to make, uh, to spice things up, okay? To spice things up, uh, there are three categories. As I said, we need to save three animals. There are three categories assigned. The first one is the most convincing speech. Number two is the most, uh, I'm sorry, the most convincing speech is where uh, a speech that makes you eager to listen. You know, the points and the ideas brought forward by the speaker is very convincing. So please listen carefully after this. Which speech, which speech among all these 11 speakers, these 11 animals are going to convince you most? Number two, the next award that they are going to eye on is 
the most creative speech award. Kerana this speech means uh, requires the speakers to deliver their speech in a most creative way. They can have props, they can have analogy, stories, catches, or even music. All right. So basically, whatever that catches your attention and is creative for you. And the third one is my own favorite. The third award or the third uh, category that we are giving away is personal favorite. It is very, very um, subjective. Yeah. Personal favorite. Anybody can be your personal favorite. Okay. Having that said, I can see now things are the chats going very fast. Yeah. In our comment section, can you please tell me where you are from? All of us would like to know where you are from. Give us your name. Give us your school. Which country you are from, and who you are rooting for. Okay. And as uh, even though we know you have students or friends that you are rooting for. Please listen to all these 11 speakers. Listen to all their uh, arguments and their points. And by the end of the night, please vote for the best to be alive, to remain alive, and to win the three categories. Okay, so far, are you clear? I'd like to look at our section, eh? our comment section. All right. Okay, yeah, yes, good. I can see people saying yes and all. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, um, I'm not here alone tonight. I'm not here alone tonight. I'm just the moderator, okay? I'm hosting the show. I have a special someone with me who we have invited, a special guest, a person who needs no further intro introduction, especially in Malaysia, I would say. Can we bring in our invited speaker, our invited guest, Mr. Samuel Isaiah? Okay, hi Sam. Hello, hi Aisha. Yes, hi, how are you? I'm doing wonderful and even better because I'm here with you and this special group of students and uh, future leaders of the world, I would say. Yes. Um, what do you think of this balloon debate concept when you first heard about it? Well, first of all, first of all, I think I have to go to the uh, usual, usual like, like to thank you, you. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, SMP, SMP Radio, Radio Provides Radio Radio for organizing this, this uh, you know, exceptional event, event international, international virtual collaborative event. event. Probably one of the blessings of the pandemic is that we get to reach out to more and more schools nationwide. We get our students to network with more and more students from other countries. And I see beyond the debate, I think it is a room for growth. It's a group for room for exchange of culture, exchange of perspectives. So I really appreciate this event organized by your school. And thank you so much for inviting me here today. It's an honor. Back to your question, I think I love the concept that you're bringing here, you know, with the getting people from different areas, um, different countries, different nationalities and cultures speaking on a theme that I think that is relevant to mankind. Mm -hmm. And I think this is very much related to, you know, our aspirations in Malaysia, especially to create global citizens, to create mm -hmm. global students. And the environment and endangered, endangered animals, I'm mm -hmm. talking about this, is definitely, definitely important. All right. But, oh, I love when you say things, you know. I mean, it's like I'm always in awe. And ladies and gentlemen, you must know Samuel Isaiah is a passionate and driven educator and leader. And he's currently now a program director of the Pemimpin GSL, yeah. And he was our te uh, top 10 finalist for Global Teacher Prize in 2020. So uh, amidst all your achievements, uh, Sam, how do you actually reach out to students? Well, I think reaching out to students, the best thing that you can do to reach out to students is to involve them, you know, to involve them at every process of what you're doing. And I, I'm sure firsthand, I shall you understand this because you could not have done this without your students collaborating with you, working together with you, being part of the organizing, uh, organizing committee, be part of the technical part of it, and also the planning of this balloon debate itself. So for me, reaching out to students is getting them actively involved mm. in the learning as what we are doing here. Yes, even though it's not that very easy, you know that, right? It's not, definitely, but I think uh, the challenges make us stronger. It, uh, we learn from our mistakes, we learn from our failures, and I know it leads learning to real life experiences, and this is a great opportunity. All right, thank you. One last question. What are your expectations tonight? Well, well, my, my first, first and number one, one expectation is I'm looking forward to learning uh, from our students here today. I, I've always enjoyed, uh, you know, engaging with students, speaking to them, uh, communicating with them, uh, no, having debates with some of them even. even. But I think, think out of all my experiences with them, I always look forward to what they have to say, what they have to represent. I'm looking forward to learning from them today. Okay, thank you so much. We'll talk later, Sam. All right. Sure. Okay, we'll talk later. So now, ladies and gentlemen, um, before we bring in those beautiful 11 speakers, let me us first introduce to you 
who they are, where they are from, and what are the animal characters they are in tonight. Okay, so let's enjoy this montage, this video we have prepared for you. Take it away. Okay, there you go, 11 of them, 11 speakers from nine uh, schools from four different countries. I'm getting, it's getting very exciting and I'm very excited myself. So now let's bring them in, all our 11 speakers. Okay, um, and please give, a, uh, please wave to our audience, ladies, and gentlemen, students. Can you see how colorful they are now there? All right, I, I can see all characters. Yes, wave, wave. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, viewers on YouTube Live, I really, really hope you are watching this on either a big TV screen or you are watching this on your laptop or desktop because if you're watching on your handphone, it might be small, yeah? And you can see that these students, our speakers, our debaters tonight have dressed up and are ready to go to convince you which among them, which one of them should be... Uh, you know, be voted in and also should remain alive. Okay, so before I continue, all right, we're going to start the ball rolling in a few minutes. So before I continue, I'm just going to remind everyone again. For our balloon debate tonight, we have two rounds. Okay, for our balloon debate tonight, we have two rounds. And the first round is, the first round, the speakers are going to tell you which uh, the reasons why they should be voted. They are going to tell you what animal they are. How are they um, contributing to the ecosystem and how important they are to the ecosystem, for example. yeah. So we are going to listen to all their points and also their justification and their arguments. They will tell you why they are important to us, to mankind and also to the ecosystem. And each speaker is given only three minutes for this first round. Okay, timekeeper, are you ready? Timekeeper, are you there? Yes, I'm ready. Okay, so our timekeeper will set the time. Um, the three minutes will start the moment you say your first word. Okay, the three minutes will start the moment you say your first word. And you have three minutes to just convince us and tell us why you must be kept alive. All right. Now, after every speaker, we will invite our facilitator, Samuel Isaiah, to comment on your presentation. And Sam, um, I hope that you can give your comments in about one minute, one minute and a half the most. Yeah, keep it very brief and also concise. And after we have finished all 11 of you, we go to the second round, the, the rebuttal round, okay, the refuting round. And this is very interesting because each speaker is given two minutes only to rebut and refute other animals. So basically now they are going to tell us why that animal, that animal, that animal, that animal does not deserve to be voted okay, uh, in the hot air balloon. Okay, so that is our second round, the rebuttal and refute, uh, refuting round, two minutes only. And we will call one by one until 11 of them. And at the end of the second round, Samuel Isaiah will give comments on all your presentations and performance. So basically, ladies and gentlemen, viewers, my beautiful audience, our speakers and our beautiful students here, they only have five minutes each to convince us on why they should be kept alive, why they should win, 
one of the three uh, awards that we are offering by the end of the show. Okay, so students, give me a thumbs up if you're ready. Speakers, are you ready? Give me a thumbs up. All right, ready? Okay, so let's start. Um, you can turn off your camera now so that we can give time for our first speaker to get ready. You can put up your slide if you have slide. Okay, and Sam, you're ready? Yes, I'm ready. Okay, good. And uh, Ikram, timekeeper, you're ready? Timekeeper is ready. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, without delaying it any longer, I would like to invite our first speaker for the first round of our balloon debate tonight, Mr. Muhammad Haikal from SMR Muhammadiyah. Tiga, Indonesia, and he is uh, and he is in the character of an orang utan. So, Muhammad Haikal, the screen is yours. Thank you. So, so good evening, evening, everyone. My, my name, name is Muhammad Haikal. I'm, I'm, I'm from, from SMA Muhammad, Muhammad Yogyakarta, 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 Indonesia, and I'm an orang utan. And I just want to say that there are other animals in this hot air balloon. I know you, we are in the line of extinction, but please. However, I am the one who most needed the help to be safe from extinction. Here's why. First, orangutans are the gardeners for forest ecosystem that help disperse plant seeds from the fruits they eat. Thus, these plant species can regenerate and sustainability become habitats and sources of food for other species. However, this is still underrated by some people. Second, orangutans are called the basic for conservation, also called as the umbrella species, because orangutans play an, a role in enriching the trees in the forest by spreading the seeds of the trees where orangutans eat. So the loss of orangutans reflects the situation and lost hundreds of plant species in the forest, specifically the tropical rainforest. Third, when we're saving orangutans, the first that become our subject is the forest, right? Their habitat. And from that, we pull a red string how this is actually have correlation of benefits to other parties of animals, plants, and even humans, which as we know that forest is one of the important things to human's life. It's a great source of oxygen, one of the source material for living from forest resources and whatnot, right? And here, here you can see by yourself, you can see the data here by yourself. This show us how urgent, how critical, and how crucial is the condition of orangutans now in the line of extinction. And what makes more convincing to us for saving, why we should save orangutans here? Because orangutans have the slow reproductive, um, the slow reproductive, reproductive rates. Female orangutans' pregnancy period is only eight, eight point five months. On average, female orangutans only have three offspring in their lifetime and only give birth every seven until eight years. You can see, right? You can picture by yourself how crucial. Actually, and you can see how how orangutans are now in the middle of the in in 2021 how orangutans be treated and how we are being called by the nature by god that we should save them because it's also our responsibility and so that's why i orangutan you should save me not, not just me, my, my family back in the forest in the, in the, the, the tropical forest, forest from, from extinction and also you should save me for not being thrown out from this hot air balloon. And because at the, at the end, end, this is not just about orangutan that we'll, 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 we'll get the good impact, but also for humans and for other animals, for other kind of species of plants. So, I, I am proud to I am I am proud to propose that orangutan should be safe and I should be safe from this hot air balloon. Thank you. Thank you, Muhammad Haikal, just in the nick of time. Yes, on point, on time. Thank you very much. I learned so much from you. So, Sam, what do you think of the first opening presentation? Well, first of all, congratulations, I really enjoyed your presentation. So, I've got a few comments. First of all, I liked that your points were succinct and the images that you used, I think, complemented your points really well. I also love how you correlated the detrimental effects of the extinction of the orangutan to other animals as well. I think you painted a bigger picture. I also appreciate that you used data and evidence at the end to kind of like wrap up everything together. Uh, um, areas areas of, of, of improvement, I think, think uh, I, want, I really wanted to feel your narrative. I couldn't. It felt like a pitch, a very strong business pitch, 
good points, good data, but I really wanted that. So I think that was a bit missing. I think probably this is something they can work on. And probably at the end, it felt a little bit rushed. So yeah, great job. Really liked it. Thank you very much, Sam. Thank okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so that was our first opening, and it was amazing. And I think let's go to the, our second. Let's go to our second speaker, and our second speaker is Umi Khalida. All right, and Umi Khalida comes from College Genius at Pintar Negara, and tonight she is the giant panda. The screen is yours, Umi. Take it away. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and good evening everyone. Today's debate is to verify who will be thrown out from this hot air balloon since the balloon seems to have a mechanical problem. So I believe that I should be saved from being thrown out from this hot air balloon as we look into my exclusiveness. Well, in this windy wet atmosphere up here, I can't believe that we have to get rid of each other just to survive. Seems like, like letting go is the best solution now. Before this goes any further, let me introduce myself. Scientifically, I'm an Aluropoda maniloka, or also called as the giant panda. You can find me in the remote mountainous regions of central China and WWF, Worldwide Fund for Nature, state that only about 1,864 of my species now survive in the wild. I eat almost nothing but bamboo shoots and leaves. Occasionally, I also eat other vegetation, fish, or small animals. Chinese Academy of Science headquarters have stated that giant panda like me have been the flagship species of wildlife conservation worldwide and have been the symbol of WWF, Worldwide Fund for Nature, since it was formed. I also known as the umbrella species since protecting the giant panda also protect other endangered a life sympathetic with the giant panda. Other than that, I have been the symbol of friendship and world peace and act as the tools of diplomacy by the Chinese government to win hearts and minds in selected foreign countries. It is seen an enormous diplomatic success, which is widely popular. In fact, the giant pandas, pandas were gifted to nine nations, including Malaysia, as a gesture of friendship. Do you know that China Panda serve ecosystem services for the human. Ecosystem services refers to the benefits human derive from the ecosystem. Chinese Academy of Science headquarters again has stated that Chinese government have been investing large amount of money in our conservation and now 67 reserves have been established. A research team led by the Wei Fuwen from Institute of Zoology with other colleges have conducted a research and perform meta-analysis to collect and assess the value of ecosystem services provided by us and forested habitat within the nature reserve, which is actually worth between 2.6 to 2.9 billion US dollar per year. Surprisingly, it's 10 to 27 times the conservation cost of my species. This shows how worthy the giant panda is. Oh, by the way, I also have a good news here that I'm currently pregnant and I hope the future of the giant panda. Hence, again, I believe that giant panda should be safe for being thrown out from this hot air balloon. I think that's all from me. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Umi Khalida. That was very good. And you talked so much about giant panda. You look so cute yourself as well tonight. What's, what, what is that on your fur or something? What are those things on your shoulder? It's like panda fur. Panda fur, okay. Okay, so Sam, what do you think of our second speaker? Right, uh... Congratulations, Kalida. Really enjoyed your uh, your pitch. Um, I appreciate the narrative uh, and uh, you ending it with that pregnant part. I think it was just really it's just a good touch at the end. Uh, I love your your voice. I think you well you paced yourself really well. It shows that you've been practicing a lot. Uh, your facial expression as well. Uh, and it was it was not contradictory when you were talking about about something that was pressing, that was in demand. You showed a serious demeanor when you were talking about something as exciting. That was really good as well. Um, I also appreciated the fact that you looked at uh, conservation efforts from uh, a different perspective with the diplomacy part. I think that is brilliant as well. Uh, areas that you could improve on, I think, uh, let me see. I think I'll talk about that later on. I think what you can improve on is to just to bring this to another level. I think it was great. It was really packaged in general. But if I were to be very, 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 very particular, 
I would say that I think your voice needed to be more that oomph at certain parts of it. Uh, it felt, um, I think it, 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 it requires that demanding presence a bit when you're talking about the serious part. The happy part, I think you got it really well, you know, I think you were just very cheerful and cheerful people about that demanding part to really drive the point that we need to save the pandas now, kind of like So, great, great job. Okay. All right. Give a clap to Umi Khalida for her presentation on Giant Panda. And thank you so much, Sam. Okay. Um, I received some, you know, messages from our friends and people on YouTube. Uh, they say that things might get a little bit like echoing there on YouTube. Yeah. Okay. So ladies and gentlemen, viewers, uh, if you're watching now, um, yes, there might be a tendency of echo because we are live streaming from our Google Meet. However, I hope that all speakers, you have your earphone on, yeah, so that we can minimize the audio noise noise or you know something related to it but so far i think sam they say you are you're doing well i mean we can hear you quite clearly all right so uh students as well i know you're trying to rush three minutes is quite you know i know and you have a lot of things to say but try to speak clearer okay so that our viewers can uh, listen to you better and understand you better okay having said that i am going to invite now our third presenter, our third speaker, and she is Noor Ariana Jasmine from Science Muzaffar Shah or Mozak, Malaysia. And tonight, she is the African forest elephant. I've never seen any elephant this cute and good looking before ever in my life. So take it away, Ariana Jasmine. Assalamu alaikum and a very good evening to Madam Aisha, today's event moderator, Mr. Samuel Azea, today's esteemed facilitator, and cherished viewers. Today, you will choose whether an animal will live to see another day or if their life will be cut off right now at this very moment. The balloon is falling and only a few will be able to survive. Who will remain? But judges, our viewers, before you choose me, let me explain what will spare me from death. You may recognize me as Ariana, a regular student from Mozak. But today, I will morph into one of the world's most important creatures, the African forest elephant. Now, who is more important in the functionality and smooth sailing of a garden than the gardener? Well, that is the exact role of us African forest elephants. We are the mega gardeners of the forest. Since our diet is dominated by fruit, we play a crucial role in dispersing many tree species, particularly the seeds of large trees, which tend to have high carbon content. Our herds travel over vast rangelands and disperse seeds in our dung, which helps generate new green growth. These trees, which are produced through the dispersion of our dung, act as a carbon sink. Trees absorb the carbon, do they not? But don't they generate something for you too, ladies and gentlemen? Oxygen. Oxygen, ladies and gentlemen, that is the answer. Isn't it true that we all take in oxygen? Don't we all breathe in oxygen to live? Everyone, don't you want to keep living? Consider that. As the largest of all land mammals, we African forest elephants also play an important role in balancing natural ecosystems. We trample forests and dense grasslands, making room for the smaller species to coexist. We also create water holes used by other wildlife as they dig dry riverbeds when rainfall is low. See, we help other species too, besides trying to maintain the balance of the ecosystem. We're basically the protectors of the forest, you might say. If I get thrown out of this balloon, there will be one less of me. The future of us African forest elephants, who are the keystone migratory species, is already at risk here and so are the fragile ecosystems that depend on us. You decide, ladies and gentlemen, make the right choice. Thank you. Thank you. Amazing, Ariana. Uh, I mean, I was hooked to your speech. You know, there's so many new things I learned about African forest elephant. Let's hear it from Sam. All right, Ariana, congratulations. Uh, I enjoyed listening to you. Uh, I think you got my name right, so that made me happy. <laughs> Usually someone who pronounces my last name get, gets it horribly wrong, but you got it on the first try, so you love it. Um, I like your points. I think uh, it was very uh, informing, so I was learning throughout what you were saying. Um, I also uh, appreciate how you 
paced yourself really well. Each points were clear, each sentences were clear. You I, the gist and the fluidity, the synchrony between the points, I think that was great. Uh, a few areas that I think you should consider would be I think your camera angle is probably a little bit off, so I felt like you were looking down instead of looking at at, at me, I don't know whether it's just me or somebody else, but it felt that way uh, because I feel that the you know when you tell a story, when you're debating with someone, your eyes tell the story as much as your words. So you need to maintain that interaction with whoever that's listening to you, and I think that would provide you with that additional uh, sense of oomph to the point that you're sharing, which was really great. So yeah, thank you so much. Thank you very much, Sam. Thank you very much. So, Ariana, I hope you keep in mind all those comments given and maybe, you know, deliver more in the second round. That was amazing. Okay, thank you, Sam. So, now, let's go to our next uh, speaker, our next participant, and all the way from Vietnam. So, this is something really new to us as well, eh, to have our Vietnamese friends with us. And you can see her getting ready. Let, let us invite Nguyen Ngoc Tra Mi from Rainbow English Centre Vietnam. And tonight, our lady here, she is the C Turtle, take it away. Well, xin chào. Hello and good evening to everyone. My name is Nguyen Ngoc Jemi. I'm from Vietnam and I'm a student at Rainbow in the Center. Tonight, I will represent the sea turtle, which is an air breathing reptile that inhabit the tropical and subtropical seas throughout the world. You can see a sea turtle here right at my back. At this time, we are going to make the big decisions. The air balloon is malfunctioned, so we need to carry up each other for the air balloon to safely fly to the nearest landing spot. I'll give you three reasons for why you should choose to save me. I play a key roles in two types of habitats, oceans and beaches. Firstly, in the oceans, I am among the very few creatures that eat seagrass. Seagrass needs to be constantly cut short to have it grow across the seafloor. Therefore, by grazing, I help maintain the health of seagrass beds, which is crucial since seagrass beds provide both the elemental and breeding grounds for numerous commercially valuable marine animals, such as shrimp, lobster, and tuna. Without me, many marine species will eventually become dangerous or extinct. Secondly, I forage on a variety of marine sponges. By doing this, I prevent the sponges from competing aggressively for space with reef building corals and keep the corals healthy. Without the sea turtles, sponges are likely to dominate the coral reef ecosystem, further limiting the growth of corals and modifying the structures of coral reefs, which can detrimentally affect other marine animals as well since corals are homes to thousands of species if the, the coral reefs are where a healthy guy, guy, the numbers of animals that live in and around the coral reefs would decline rapidly. Thirdly, I use beaches to lay eggs. Such coastal environments are nutrient-poor and depend on vegetation to protect against erosions. My eggs, whether hatched or unhatched, and hatchlings that fail to make it into the oceans are nutrient sources for doing vegetation. By supplying a concentrated source of high quality nutrients, I not only improve but also stabilize my nesting beaches. Furthermore, these vital nutrients also aid the growth of vegetation, which will prevent each erosions and provide food for a variety of plant eating animals. For the three reasons I have just presented to you, I believe that sea turtles contribute, contribute the most to the ecosystem. And, and I, I also believe that sea turtles deserve, deserve to, be to be safe. Thank, thank you for listening. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Nguyen Ngoc Tra Mi from Rainbow English Centre, Vietnam. Do you have any idea how many people are talking about you, actually chatting about you in our comment section at the moment? And they're in Vietnamese, you know. I mean, I can't make head or tail, but it looks interesting. So, Sam, what do you think of our sea turtle? Well, first of all, congratulations. And uh, I really loved how, how you actually used. used. I think, I think you, you, your, your, your narrative and your arguments, arguments are very structured. And towards, and towards the, the end, end uh, I, think I think you made conscious, conscious effort to go back to the three points that you were focusing on. And as I, I think, think that was, that's really, really good. You know, you started off with point number one, and then point number two, point number three, and then you reminded the audience, hey, 
these are the three main reasons why. And you related that to future sustainability. So, so I think that's a very strong way of, of, of kind of like delivering the argument. I would also like to talk to words. Um, you did not. You, you you did not try to impress too much with bombastic words, words too much as well. But I think at, at a certain point, I think you use the right words and the right points and the right way to kind of like reinforce your ideas. So very good job, well done. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you so much. I can see she looks so relieved there, yeah? <laughs> okay, good job. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, viewers, um, we have listened to animals from the ocean. We have listened to animals from the wildlife. Let's go to the Arctic now, Circle of Arctic. So, it's time to listen to Jasmine Nur Hasana from Dharma Karya Ute, Indonesia. And tonight, she is the polar bear. Take it away, Jasmine. Good evening, everyone. My name is Jasmine Hassan. I'm from Barra Maria High School in Indonesia. If I asked you what kind of animals live in the Arctic, you probably would answer with animals like the adorable polar bears or the iconic rhinos. To me and my family, family, the polar bears are the poster species for climate change, and we can signal that there are polars in the Arctic marine ecosystem. But for future generations, the ice covered ocean and my species, the polar bears, will be just made history like how the dodo birds and many other extinct species are. On the IUCN Red List, which is an extinction category, us polar bears are classified as vulnerable. While we are not critically endangered or extinct in the wild, I do believe it is better to act now when there's a higher chance of saving us from extinction. Why should I, polar bears, stand this whole blue? Firstly, I play an important role in the Arctic ecosystem as an apex predator. With our diet, we can see seals, seals high fat ring, big seals, and on some occasions, narwhals, we keep our place population in check. If we were to go extinct, there will be behavioral changes on the seals and the narwhals. They would reproduce without check, causing overpopulation, and they will hunt freely without fear of us or others, adding an intense pressure onto the animals they consume, like fishes. And with no polar bears to control the population, the seals and narwhals will quickly degrade and overrun the habitat as food or fishes become scarce. The population will become sick and will be malnourished and will be likely to move and migrate. And with that being said, the extinction of polar bears, migrating seals, decreasing population of fishes, and overall balance, unbalanced damage ecosystem also negatively impacts the indigenous and native community who lives in the far northern, northern areas of Alaska, Alaska Canada, Canada Siberia, Siberia, and Greenland. And given that the mass agriculture isn't the easiest thing to produce in the north, it, it makes sense that any threat to the wildlife, wildlife which, which is, is a huge segment, segment of the food source, would, would be problematic. problematic. And to conclude, saving me, the polar bear, will protect the Arctic Ocean, home to diverse marine species in unique ecosystems, ecosystems that, provide that provide food, food livelihoods, cultural identity, and to an extent, I play, I play a major key role in moderating the climate of our one and only yeah. Earth. Thank, thank you, you and vote for the polar bears. Okay, thank you, polar bears. Wow, that's very, uh, I would say, very informative in, indeed. Okay, Sam, what are your comments for our uh, Jasmine Nur Hassana? Hello, Jasmine. I really liked uh, that you were very calm throughout it. I it felt like you were having a conversation with me. I really, really liked that. Um, I think it was very easy to listen to. I could read everything that you were saying. You brought, brought up the charts at the right time with good images. You could, you know, I saw the, the pyramid that you showed as well. Um, and uh, I also I think one of, one of the factors that I really appreciated was how you related it to the livelihoods of indigenous communities as well. I think that is a perspective that I would love to see more. And you mentioned about cultural identity of how animals are actually part of our identity as human beings. It's really important, really tough. Okay, thank you, Samuel. All right, and thank you, our polar bear. All right, keep it up. All right, thank you. So now, from the Arctic, we are going back to the savannah. We are going back to the wild. All right, and what is the next animal coming up? We have with us our sixth speaker, Muhammad Khalif from the Malay College, Kuala Kangsa, Malaysia. And tonight, our, our man here, he is the white rhino. Khalif? Take it away. 
Hello everyone, Hello, I am Muhammad Khalif and I am from the Malay College, Palakamsa. I am the second largest mammal in the world, why rhinos are the two species? Save me, save me, save me. Ladies and gentlemen, I am the white rhinoceros, and I only have two and a half minutes left to convince you why I must be saved and not and not thrown out of this white air balloon. It's because I am a mosquito species. My talking points are first, I am an ecosystem engineer, and the second point is I impact the stretch of the wildlife food chain. What are mosquito species? These two species basically hold, basically hold the entire ecosystem together and I am critical to the functioning of the ecosystem. Without these two species, i.e. me, the whole ecosystem collapses and ceases to extinct. There are three types of these two species. These two species. The first one is predators, ecosystem engineers and also mutualists. As a white rhino, I yeah, happen to be both ecosystem engineers and also mutualists. My species my are even avoided by predators, by predators, making me immune, to, immune predation. to predation. As a keystone species, keystone I definitely species, am I definitely ecosystem am engineer. Ecosystem I engineer. increase the biodiversity of the grass diversity and prevent wildfires. And prevent wildfires. How? When I graze How? the grass, when I make the grass so short, I the grass wildfire cannot burn the grass. I am world's mega reason and mega My grace indirectly control the intensity and spread of fire and spread of fire fire spread to nearby towns to nearby towns save me so you can see that i benefit not only to the ecosystem but also to humankind to you are watching you who are watching on as an eco is as an ecosystem engineer, as an ecosystem I reshape the habitat around me habitat by altering the land. When I wallow in mud puddles, I remove mud and remove natural water and natural are cleaned for other species to drink from. Do you know that antelopes can drink safely by not getting stuck in the mud? This gives them the chance to run away from predators. All because of all because of ladies and gentlemen. My second point is my existence brings huge impact to the wildlife food chain. My dung fertilizes the soil. And provide, provide livelihood, livelihood for, other for other species. species. After I poop, poop, dung beetles claim my menu, menu and leave their eggs in menu and, and, and bury it. it. Therefore, my dung supports fly, beetle, and fungus species, which are at the bottom of their respective food chain. Without me, the ecosystem collapses. Remember, I'm no predator, harming no one, only bringing good to all species, from big ones to the smallest in the food chain. Can you see my significant role in the ecosystem where if I cease to exist, that promises a downfall for the entire food chain and ecosystem. Therefore, save me, the white rhinoceros. Thank you very much. Thank you very, very much, white rhinoceros. And what does Samuel have to say about our white rhino? Hey man, I'm loving the vibe. Really, really loving the vibe. You know, uh, I, I like how we started off with the narrative. I, I, I don't know if ever anyone realized it. You look at the back and it's small. It's got the right nose, right nose, right nose. The pictures are just like that. Like brilliant. You, you had it like you're not just pitching for the sake of the balloon you made. You're actually living it. You're using it in your environment as well. Appreciate that. Brilliant content, by the way. Body language was on point. Um, um, I also, I also like, like that you went with, with a different route. route. Instead of using the plastic words, you use relatable words like tongue, poop. I think brilliant examples. I really, really like that. So great job, man. And of course, the guitar. Uh, I'm a musician, kind of like a musician myself. So I really appreciate that. And I think it brings another perspective of learning where we bring you know multidisciplinary aspects into learning and it could be done in debate or in expressing an idea as well. So great job with, uh, with that. And I'm sure you practice a lot, but you educated it really, really, really well. Okay, thank you very much, Sam, and thank you, White Rhino. And now we are going back to the ocean. Whew, it's been tiring, yeah, from the Arctic to the savannah to the wild. And now we are going to the ocean. Let's meet with our Miss Bakita, and she is Iman Mutiara from SMK Raja Permaisuri Bainun, Malaysia. Take it away, Bakita. <laughs> Best sangat sangat, tapi ekor kan pakai ni pakai mikrofon. This is Juliet. I know, I know. It is killing me and my family in the ocean. 
Assalamualaikum and hi everyone. I am Humanitarian Binti Sizaim from SMK Raja Pemaisui by known representing Malaysia. Hi everyone. I am the Vakita, the rarest marine mammal. There are only 10 of us remaining in the Gulf of California in Mexico. Fellas, saving me means upholding the law and advancing in human technology. First and foremost, save me and you uphold the law. My size might be small, but I carry a very big message. Stop illegal fishing. Do you know that illegal fishing has taken place for decades and this has killed many of us, the marine life? Why, you might ask, these illegal fishermen use gill nets to catch fish like the toba for unproven medicinal purposes. And the trap they used to set up the, to catch the toba caught the kitas too. The kitas like myself are negatively impacted by this trade and I have been indirectly threatened by this illegal wildlife crime for years. Being a rare marine animal, the authorities realized that my population must not extinct, and therefore, when I got trapped in Gilnet, this raises a norm of illegal fishing. Having said that, I must be safe amidst all other animals in this balloon, because my population is small, and preventing my extinction is dependent on banning illegal fishing. This means when you see me. You uphold the law by fighting against the use of gill nets that endangers marine life in the ocean. Second off, if you save me, you will have an advantage in exploring the undiscovered part of the ocean because of my ability to use echolocation in exploring my habitat, among here and most low ocean floor. Basically, we, the whole family of cetacean, use echolocation to interact with each other and also to locate what's beneath the ocean. Now, human had adopted our ability to design a submarine that is able to do the same thing, thanks to the research of our brothers, the dolphin. Imagine, if I am saved with my smaller and my ability to explore the murkier and more slow ocean floor compared to the dolphins, I might be able to contribute in the crafting of a smaller and more compact version of a modern submarine that can reach to a deeper ocean floor, as I am. So if you save me, I will be able to bring the submarine technology that we have now to a much better advancement. Thus, if you save me, thus, save me, save the law, and save the humankind. Thank you. Thank you very much, Iman Mutiara. Okay, and... Wow, I know Vakita is actually a small fish, but you don't small sound small there. So Sam, what do you think? <laughs> I'm actually a bit afraid to talk to her right now because I'm like, I felt that anger. Uh, she really, really, like, you know, took in the. I mean, she, she felt like a Vakita, like she's in danger. Her family's gonna die soon, you know, everything's just gonna, gonna be caught. So, yeah, I really, really felt that. I really, really appreciated that. Also, because of the drama at the beginning with that and all that. Like that. that gave us. Uh, <laughs> I was like, what's she doing? doing? What's going on? I was like, oh, that's cool. That's really nice. Um, yeah, I also like how you related it. Um, um, Actually, Actually, this this, this animal, animal I just read about this animal a few days ago. So I only got to know about this animal a few days ago. Yes. This, uh, so, so I think it's really good that you're actually creating this awareness as well with this particular animal. And I like how you wrapped it up with that punchline, you know. So great job and keep up the good work. Thank you, thank you, Sam. And thank you, Iman Mutiara from Bainon, uh, Malaysia. Okay, so yes, Vakita is one of the rarest marine animal. Okay, and I am getting questions as well now, yeah. There are people asking, okay, there are people asking when are they going to start voting, when are the links going to be given. So this is my answer, okay. I know you are excited and I know you can't wait to vote for your favourite speaker, okay. But then, ladies and gentlemen, um, the voting links will be given at the end of our show, meaning to say right after all the speakers, all the debaters, they have spoken in the second round as well, and then we will open the link. So you have to wait until the end. And I also do apologize. I, I also do apologize. I know uh, on our YouTube channel or platform, it's a bit echoing. Okay, number one, we cannot really help it because when we stream from our Google Meet to YouTube, that they tend, okay, there is a tendency of echoing and the sound of double sounding. Yeah. However, uh, we just hope that from time to time, 
honestly, I hope it gets better. And I hope, and also it has to do with speakers, audio system, and also microphone, and also their earphone. Yeah. Um, I'll try. We'll try and figure things out from time to time. I'll try to put down my uh, volume as well, if that helps. Okay. I do understand that you are trying to listen as hard as possible, and you are you want to enjoy it. But at the same time, just to let everyone know. Um, in the Google Meet now, in our Google Meet section here, we are really enjoying this. Everyone is very clear. Right, Sam? I think everyone is like, you can listen to everyone quite clearly, right? Yes, absolutely. Ah, uh, okay. Clear. All right. So, I just hope that, um, I don't know, I just hope that the problem is rectified. But um, above all, I am quite happy. We are blessed that our internet connection is still going okay. Okay. So, I think most importantly, our internet will just stay okay till the end of all this. Okay. So, let's not waste any more time. So, just now from the ocean, I think we are back to the wild. Yes. We are back to the savannah. And our next speaker is ooh, a predator. And Nur Aina Ishira from SMK Raja Permaisuri by Nur Malaysia is the armor leopard. Take it away, Aina. Okay, we're still waiting for Aina. She may have some connection problem. It's okay. All right. Ooh, let's pin her. Oh, jeez. Oh, my enemy. Assalamu alaikum and hi, I am Aina from SMK Raja from my Sribayun and I am representing Malaysia. Apex predators are key to the health of an ecosystem. I am an armor leopard. I can only be found in the mountainous forests of the Russian Far East and Northeast China. The only leopard that can live in a temperate forest and in your harsh winters is me. Ladies and gentlemen, the reason I need to survive in this hot air balloon is because of the deer and the wolf. Now, folks, I want you to consider this. If I'm not here, the population of deer and wolf will grow. First of all, deer will cause long-term ecological effect by eating up forest parts, which will make the trees and undergrowth disappear. Also, loss of undergrowth means no place for small animals and birds to shelter and nest. This will cause the disappearance of many native species that no longer have access to the habitat they need. Loss of species like birds, wild species would disappear and would devastate the whole ecosystem as birds play a vital role in pollinating plants. Following this, the bull. Boars are known as invasive animals. Boars have diseases and parasites that wildlife, domestic livestock, and humans are vulnerable to. Animals that are infected <coughs> by the pathogen can die. Humans are also at risk. This can lead to diseases that are self-limiting, chronic, and fatal. Besides, boars can infect humans with the virus that they carry. This will put humankind in a dangerous spot as they don't know what type of disease it is or mutant it is, which then will cost them their lives. To summarize, the reason why I should survive and be safe because without me, animals disappear and there will be diseases caused by deer and bull. Being on top of the food chain, I am nature giving control and a balance keeper. Thank you. Okay. Um all right, I think she has finished. Okay, all right. Okay, so what do you think, Sam? Okay, um, first of all, congratulations, Aisha. Love the setup, love the gunshot at the beginning as well. I think good dramatic effect. Um, 
Can you hear me? Hear me? Everything is good, right? Yes. Sorry. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, I can hear you. Yes. Okay, okay. good, good. So yeah, I think you were dealt with uh, a challenge because your your animal is a predator, but I think you did it real well. You managed to capture the hearts with your good argument, with your good data, with your good evidences, and how you portrayed your your arguments throughout was really good. I think if there's if there's an area for improvement, I I, I felt that throughout your whole uh, argument, it felt like the pitch of, of and your voice was very monotonous you didn't fluctuate it really well it was just very high pitched you know very in your face it's good but sometimes you need to play around with it and uh, it, it the ending felt felt a bit abrupt it was sudden i wasn't expecting it to end and it was like it just ended by the way yeah and it's called Aisha Aisha. 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 yes yeah. Yeah. yeah because if, if your, your voice projection was just escalating 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 at the back it just ended. yeah there was no natural transition towards the end so i think that's something that you can work on but anyways great job okay good job thank you sam thank you so much and i think she really looks amazing don't you think so most definitely yeah. Best yeah. yeah did you do it yourself Aina? I think it's a filter, right? Or is, is it not? Is it's it a make not? pick up, yeah. Wow, it face really painting, looks face so painting. Real. Yeah. <laughs> I right. thought it was a filter. It's not. No, oh, it's no. not. It's face yeah. painting. <laughs> All right. Oh, thank you, Aina, and thank you, Sam. Okay. You. Um. Yes, it was. Um. I was like taken off guard because. At the same time, I was trying to, you know, making sure that they are well heard. So I'm like going, putting down my volume, picking up my volume. <laughs> because I know that our viewers are saying, you know, they the students echo. Uh, again, we are trying our best. Yeah, We know that when we uh, live stream from Google Meet, uh, this is one of the problems that bound to happen. We just hope that the speakers can also try to speak clearer, clearly, so that they can listen to you better. Okay, without wasting any more time, we're done with the with Amr Lappert. From Lapet, let's go to Tiger. And we are we are very blessed uh, tonight. We have Miss Kumagai Sakura from National Institute Technology Technology of Yube, Japan. And tonight, Miss Sakura is the Sumatran Tiger. Take it away, Sakura. Uh, good evening, everyone. I am Sakura Kumagai. I'm from Japan and a student of NIT Ube College. And I am Sumatran Tiger from now. I'm going to talk about the reasons why I should leave. When I am acting alone, I am poached, trafficked, and I Die, and my body is illegally traded by humans. If we are few, we cannot sustain the ecosystem because I am a carnivore. I am at the top of the food chain where the Sumatran tiger, we, live. When we are few, the food chain in the place where we live is out of balance. So having less, I have a very, 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 very big negative impact on the X system. So, in other words, I should be because the goodness of the global environment is proportional to our population. Thank you very much. And please save me. <laughs> that is so cute. Please save me. Well, I hope that the viewers are going to root for you. Thank you so much, Sakura. What do you think, Sam? Hello, uh, yeah, I, I missed you a bit. Is it my turn to speak? Yes, yes, yes. yes. She's finished. Okay, cool. okay. Uh, Sakura, hi. Hello. Uh, Hello. Great job. Great job. I uh, really like Thank your, you. your sharing. Uh, I like that everything was clear. You took your time. You paced yourself really well. And uh, if, if there's any, if there's an area of improvement, I, 
I hope that you use a bit more of your body language a bit more. Uh, I think that was lacking. If you look at some of our previous uh, participants, they really use their hands, their face, how they move, their eyes as well. So I think that's something that you can continually work on. Congratulations. Thank you so much, Samuel Isaiah. Thank you. Thank you, Sakura. Thank you. Well done. Well done. Okay. So now we have listened to two predators, the leopard and tiger. Now, probably this next animal uh, is an animal we are not very familiar with. Okay. Even my mom, when she first read about it, she Googled. I mean, I mean what is it? What is that? All right. So let's call upon Syed Ahmad Arif from Malay College, Kuala Kangsa, Malaysia. And tonight, Syed Ahmad Arif is the Sawola. Take it away, Syed. Hi, Hi, my name, my is, name is Ahmad, Ahmad Arif, Arif and I am I from the Malay, Malay College Kuala Kangsa. I am a Saola, one, one of the most spectacular zoological discoveries in the 20th century. century. I was found by accident in 1992 when three Saola skulls were found in a Vietnamese hunter's home. I can only be found in the Animite Mountains of Laos and Vietnam. I am a critically endangered species and on the brink of extinction. There are less than 750 of my kind left. Ladies and gentlemen, I should not be left to die as I am extremely important to the environment. Firstly, I am the protector of the forest. I can only survive in the wild. There is none of my kind in captivity anywhere. To ensure my survival, Government must ensure my habitat is fully protected. Ladies and gentlemen, this means forests will be saved from the chainsaws of loggers for agriculture and infrastructure. In fact, the Ministry of Forestry in Vietnam has cancelled its logging operations in the Saola habitat. The forests of the animals also hold magnificent old growth tree species some over 500 years old, as well as the Earth's last remaining wild stands of the Chinese swamp cypress. All of this will be saved. All this will ensure clean rivers and streams and intact forests for all in the forest to enjoy. Secondly, I, I am also the protector of wildlife. The Animal Mountain Range is among the most biodiverse regions in the world. Scientists are regularly, are regularly discovering many new species there with the establishment of three nature reserves for Saola. Animals will be safe from the snares of poachers as poaching will be banned here. Between February 2011 and November 2012, 27,000 snares have been saved from, from animals, animals from the death, death. even endangered ones like the large and little mutas and the animal striped, striped rabbit, rabbit that roam my habitat. Saving, saving my habitat is the only way to ensure I do not go extinct, extinct. and, and this, this protects all animals in my habitat. I am the flagship of the animal mountains, mountains, the protector of the, the forest and wildlife. wildlife. I deserve to, to remain in hot air balloon. Thank you. Thank you, Syed Ahmad Arif. Thank you so much, the Saola. I really appreciate the background picture. Now I know what a Saola looks like. Now let's uh, listen to our facilitator. What do you What do you think, Sam? Hello, Syed Arif. Uh, looking at a shop with the suit and tie. I really appreciate that. Uh, I like the clarity of your presentation. Um, you made some good references to current policies uh, that the Vietnamese government are doing. I think that shows that you did your homework, did your research really well. Uh, yeah, and I also learned something. I never knew this animal existed. Uh, the uh, it's also known as the Asian unicorn. I shared it. Yeah, know, thank you. Yeah, really, really cool. Really cool. So yeah, I think yes, I think you brought forth a very uh, convincing statement at the end as well to wrap up your whole presentation today. So great job. Okay, thank you to our facilitator and thank you to Syed Ahmad Arif. Thank you so much, Saola. We'll see you later. Okay, and uh, Sam, we're already coming to the last animal for our first round. Okay, our round one. We're coming to the last animal. And 
this is even more interesting. Okay, we're going to look at what Western lowland gorilla is like. Okay, what is it? Okay, now we have here with us Tran Tran Dung Tree from Long Van Chan High School for the Gifted Vietnam. Um, Tran Dung Tree, are you ready? Yes, yes I'm, I'm ready. ready. Okay, so take it away. Xin chào and hello everyone. Welcome to the balloon debate. On the situation of the pandemic, I hope everyone are all vaccinated so that you can stay safe in this pandemic. My name is Zhang Dangji. I'm from Vietnam and I'm the representative of Lu Meng Chang High School for the Gifted. And today I will be the Western Lowland Gorilla and I will show you why I should be staying in the hot air balloon. Me. Western lowland gorilla Zhang Dangji is sitting on the earth while hugging a lung shaped tree. And what does that mean? Why am I doing so? As you can see, I, the lungs helps moving fresh air into our bodies and remove waste gases. And what the, and the earth needs fresh air in order to maintain lives. And my species duty is to protect the forest ecosystem which is known as the Earth's lung. I'm the great apes that lives in the equatorial Africa. And our DNA is highly similar to that of humans from 95 to 99%. And we're among humans' closest living relatives, only after chimpanzees and bonobos. And interestingly, we are very shy and reserved towards people. We will attack only if we are threatened or if a person misbehaves. So more often than not, we are considered harmless and we help balancing the forest ecosystem. And how do we do so? We do so by dispersing and germinating seeds from a wide range of fruit trees which we consume. And as umbrella species, we also play an important part in keeping these lungs healthy by letting in lights and shaping plants communities within the forest. And by maintaining an intact ecosystem can limit disease spillovers from animals to humans and possibly preventing the next wave of HIV, Ebola, or Corona. So when we're healthy, the forests in which we live in are healthy as well. And John Paul Herwa, a gorilla program manager from Dan Fossey Gorilla Fund once said, I believe that saving all animals and plants is essential, but gorillas are actually special, special animals. So we should save them always, as much as possible, so that they live forever. So in conclusion, this shows how important the Western Lowland Gorilla J is to the forest ecosystem. So in short, protecting me is synonymous with protecting the earth. So please save me. I will benefit the earth. That is the end of my presentation. Thank you everyone for listening. Thank you so much, um, Tron Dung Tree. I really enjoyed it. Okay, I love looking at your pictures. Now let's see what our facilitator has to say about our Western Lowland Gorilla. Oh, hello, Tran. Tran, uh, thank you so much. I think I learned a lot from you today as well. I think your um, the facts that you delivered and how you 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 merged it all together into one narrative. I really appreciated that. Uh, but you sounded a little nervous in the beginning. I get that. It happens to me as well. But I think you pulled through towards the end. You got comfortable in what you were saying. You got comfortable. You remember what you were sharing. I think that's all matters is how you ended it. I like the images, but I think at certain points, the images were a bit, a little destructive. I think there's a few point, parts where you were just going through the images through quickly. And I, I just didn't know whether to focus on what you were saying or whether should I focus on what you, you were showing on the screen. So I think with a little bit more practice, you know, getting the timing right, everything's going to be good really, really well. Congratulations, and I really enjoyed your session. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Samuel Isaiah, and thank you so much, uh, Tree, as well, okay, for uh, presenting about Lowland Gorilla and very, very exciting information indeed. Okay, now, ladies and gentlemen, um, viewers on YouTube Live, we are... We have finished with our first round of our uh, debate, of our balloon debate for tonight. Now we are going to our second round. Um, can you all hear me or not on YouTube? Can you hear me? Because I have like, um, you know, uh, slowed down, lowered down my volume so that we are trying to lessen the echo. 
Okay. Oh, we have someone from Alaska. Oh, okay. Hi. Okay. So, um, give me give me a thumbs up if you can hear me quite well here. Yes. Okay. Good. Good. So we are coming to our second round of debate now. This is more interesting. All these eleven animals are going to rebut. Uh, sorry, to rebut and refute others, each other, to convince us, the viewers, which amongst them deserve to be saved and also to remain the final standing three. All right. So second round. Please convince our audience and remember that by the end of it, by the end of it, after we have listened to all, yeah, then only we will open up our voting link and our facilitator will give a general comments or, uh, you know, um, uh, I would say feedback after we have finished listening to 11 of them. And each speaker now has only two minutes to rebut and refute. Okay, timekeeper, are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. Okay, so far I think the timekeeper is having a very good time because everyone is like just, you know, doing it on time. Everyone is like really, really on point. So I think our timekeeper is having a good time tonight, probably just enjoying the chats yeah, in the YouTube comment. Okay, yes, so two minutes. Yes or no, Kray? Yes, very much. All right. Okay, so Muhammad Haikal, we're going to start again from the first speaker. Muhammad Haikal from uh, SMR Muhammadiyah Tiga, Indonesia. Uh, the Orang Uchan for the night. So are you ready to rebut and refute? The rest okay so your it's your the screen is yours take it away all right uh, thank you so um me the orangutan i'm the orangutan which I'll, which is also as i said before that i'm also critically critically endangered but I have some points for some animals here that I've found some flaw, I think, I guess. First of all, uh, for big giant panda, let's, uh, hi panda, dear panda. Uh, I know, yes, you are very important for our ecosystem, but you didn't mention any contribution that, that, uh, that vital to our environment because uh, we are here trying to find the uh, the contribution of these anim we animals to the environment because it's uh, it's more like our priority what we are, we are talking talking now right but your arguments are also good but uh, in, in not and not as uh, what we are looking for tonight but uh, and I have much more impactful contribution more vital contribution to our environment second to the African forest elephant hello african forest elephant i know you are that important but there are still many kinds of elephants which can keep the ecosystem because we can see we can consider the biodiversity where you live and third sea turtle dear sea turtle i know the other ocean biodiversity can keep the coral and the whole part of the ocean also and also there is something about the sea turtle statement she said that if we lost sea turtle the coral reef and can be damaged Therefore, Therefore, other species, species are being in the bad impact. However, however, we can see the status quo now. We can see now the condition, the coral reefs, which are also crucial because polluted ocean. So we can conclude that maybe sea turtle is also in the threat because it's their habitat. It's their where they live, right? So we can, uh, I can, uh, we can say that maybe we cannot be depend from the from the statement that uh, the sea turtle are also important for the. For the for the uh, for the color reefs, right? for the other uh, for the other uh, uh, marine species, and yeah, th uh, that's from that's from me. Thank you. Thank you very much, Haikal. Thank you very much. Very strong rebuttals indeed. Good job. Well done. So you are done for our balloon debate for tonight. Thank you for joining us, Muhammad Yatiga, Indonesia, and our next speaker now, our. Um, for our second round, for our rebuttals round, let's call upon our giant panda, Umi Khalida from College Genius at Pintanegara. Take it away, Umi. All right. Hi, good evening, everyone. It's me again. And I'm still standing strong with my statement that I should be staying in this hot air balloon. First of all, I'm going to answer for the orang utan question. Do you know that the giant panda serve ecosystem services for the human? Ecosystem services refers to the benefits human derive from the ecosystem. This include the culture, provisioning services such as food and water for the life of local community, and also 
uh, giant panda is economically valuable, we generate significant economic benefits for local community through ecotourism. First of all, let's look at Vakuita and Saula. Do you know that scientists have tried to beat Saulas and about 20 have been captured, but all died within a few weeks. Same thing happened to the Vakuita. An international team called Vakuita CPR was formed to help Vakuita reproduce since they only reproduce only once every two years. But sadly, nothing good happened and one of the Vakuita died. If we save both of you now, how would you think that Vakuita and the Saula will reproduce since even scientists attempted to beat them did not turn out good? Other than that, facts stated that white rhinos aren't afraid to use their horns when it comes to heart matters and the rate of their mortal combat is higher than any other mammal on the planet. You said that you are serving others, but now you are being so hard with your own species. In fact, you will just fight with each other and eventually die. Dear friends, if you have nothing good to give back to the country, or you cannot even survive for another two or three hours, then it's better to choose the one that at least have something in turn. These are the things that we have to think again so that the other animal's death is not rested. Before I close my speech, let's look at me. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the interesting part. Have you ever think that my fur can be used as a protective shield in case that hot air balloon is flying to a cold place or cold environment? Other than that, my weight can be used to balance the weight of hot air balloon so that it will not fly too high, which will cause the rescue process to be harder and kill the animal's remains since there's lack of oxygen up there. I think that's all from me. Thank you very much. Chariana, Jasmine, I can see the timekeeper getting a little bit upset there. All right, thank you so much. I can see as well our forest, African forest elephant. You guys are really trying to throw one another out. I can see that. Congratulations and thank you. You are done for the balloon debate of the night. And, um, sorry, giant panda, yeah, giant panda. Okay, and after our giant panda, let's listen to African forest elephant, Ariana Jasmine from Mosaic, Malaysia for her rebuttals and her whatever she has to say to throw out other animals. Take it away. Well, well you've heard, heard from, from everyone. everyone. Yes, yes, we all have our respective contributions to the ecosystem. But do they have a huge relevance to the future of the ecosystem for them to still be able to stay in the hot air balloon? Well, I'm sorry, Vikita, but why should we save you when there are only 10 of you left? and the sea is doing just fine. How can 10 of you do much to the ecosystem as we exist now? And giant panda. Yes, you are cute. Yes, you are adorable. You promote world peace and you are a symbol of friendship. But how do you really contribute to the ecosystem? Do you help new growth? Do you help go generate more trees that will act as a carbon sink? I think not, but me? If I don't exist anymore, how will the forest survive? The garden cannot survive without its gardener. And if the garden dies down, what will happen to the out what will happen to the other inhabitants currently living in it? Ladies and gentlemen, remember, make the right choice. We African forest elephants are counting on you. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Ariana. Uh, Ariana Jasmine, African forest elephant, okay, from Muzak, Malaysia. Thank you so much. Yep, it's getting heated now. I can see that everyone is trying their best to convince the viewers out there that they deserve to be voted at the end of our show. Thank you so much. And let's move on to the next speaker. And our sea turtle tonight is going to speak for the next two minutes to convince all of you and also to rebut others. Let's welcome Nguyen Ngoc Trami from Rainbow English Center, Vietnam. Take it away, sea turtle. Um, hi, it's me again, the sea turtle. Um, first of all, I will point out some flaws that other species have. Like um, Vakita, um, you have said that your, your number is small, so we need to protect the Vakita. So I think that's, that uh, that's reason is so weak. So why, why is your population is little and we have to protect yours and secondly to the sumatran tigers um that 
uh, Ta, she said that if the Sumatran tigers are only left a few, they cannot sustain and then um, the ecosystem will outbalance. But there are also many other predators that can balance the ecosystem without Sumatran tigers. And you have just pointed out one reason why, uh, why you should not be thrown out of the air balloon. So I think it's not convincing at all. So why, why do we bother to save? Why do we bother to save others' animals instead of saving me? Like I have, I not only benefit the ecosystem and I not only benefit under water, but also out of water, which is the ocean's ecosystems and the beach ecosystem as I have just as I have said in my previous speech. Thank you. What, Rami? How does it feel to have finally completed your task for the night? How do you feel now? Relieved? Uh, I feel more relieved because <laughs> I'm really nervous when I'm waiting for my time. I can see that on your face, but congratulations. Thank you, Sitato. Thank you for joining us. All right, now we are going to our next animal, okay? And our next animal, we're going back to Arctic, and we are going to meet Mrs. Miss Polar Bear. Jasmine Nur Hasana, are you ready? To take the second round? Okay, so Jasmine Hasana from Dharma Karya Ute, Indonesia, the polar bear, second round. Take it away. Um, the first thing I'd like to say is about the giant panda. I'm sorry that you have taken a lot of hits today, um, but there is one thing that I want to talk about, and it's about how much money we've been using to contribute to, you know, help the pandas. You know, the pandas are really taking a lot of money. And right now, during the COVID stuff and like the corona and the decreasing, declining economy, is it really worth it since it's, you know, like the pandas are all like most of the time it's in zoos. So why don't we take care and save the animals that are easier to save and are more important? to the world and not just our own ecosystem, like the polar bears. Like polar bears are indicators, indicators of the earth. If sea ice melts, if the habitat dies, we will die too, because we, predominant, we dominantly live in the ice. We cannot adapt to any other ecosystems like most of you can. Like the sawola, what, can you like not, um, how about you just, move to another habitat because um <laughs> so, um you know the solar lives mostly in forest and if the solar goes extinct is it really that important to do to the ecosystem because if the ecosystem is diverse and biodiverse i mean um you know there might be another species that can replace and take that spot rather than the solar so it's not you know, um, what else, what else? Yeah, I think that's all I have for today. <laughs> Thank you. Ah, the, the, polar bears, though. Uh, thank you so much, Polar Bear. Honestly, I'm sure the audience, our viewers would like to give you a clap. Everybody is clapping for you, but from behind the screen. Good job. Is it difficult to talk about these animals? What do you think? It is quite difficult since I really agree with all the points they make oh. it's like i want to save all of them but i can't i have oh. to choose myself first it's you're really hard to you know go against all of them you're such a noble polar bear you want even to save all your other animals but we can do that yeah. tonight yeah it's really sad <laughs> sam do you want to have something to say yeah, I think she started off really well. She was like vicious with the panda, but then after that, I think she just couldn't take it anymore. I'm really enjoying this. It feels like, you know, that, that new show, Squid Games, but it's all for animals. You know, you guys are just <laughs> trying to beat one another. Trying to, yeah. I know. Great, and great, job, great job, Jasmine. I know you're struggling because I you know all the points were great, but yeah, great job. Uh, thank you jasmine thank you. and when you say that sam now i feel bad i feel like i'm the one who's pointing out guns to all these animals you know <laughs> trying to get rid of them from the balloon okay. but they're doing well so far really i'm really liking it really, really, really okay liking it. all right now let's listen to the next animal the white rhino 
Okay, let's bring back Muhammad Khalif from the Malay College, Kuala Kangsa, Malaysia. Take it away, White Rhino. Ladies and gentlemen, for my rebuttals. First, there are apex predators on this hot air balloon and they say that they are on top of the food chain and if they go extinct, the ecosystem will be imbalanced. Yeah, that is true, no denial to that. But there are other predators that are not endangered and that are not endangered. And because their species are enough, they can really control the population of the herbivores, which are the prey. So we can throw out polar bears, Sumatran tiger, and the sea turtle. Because if we lose them, nothing much will change. We still have other predators like the Arabian oryx, the grey wolves, and many more. Plus, these predators on the balloon and I on the balloon right now, bring harm to human beings. There are reported cases where tiger attacks human, a polar bear attacks. Compared to me, ladies and gentlemen, I don't harm human. In fact, I bring good to them. Second, the giant panda. Sorry. The giant panda is a, an anti-social animal. And it doesn't even communicate with its own species. And let me tell you a fact that the giant panda is a carnivore. Carnivore hunt for prey, but unlike this panda, it doesn't hunt because, because it is lazy and heavy. They eat bamboos even though they are carnivores. Last but not least, African elephant. The African elephant is also known as a keystone species, uh, which are the ecosystem engineer. But uh, compared to me, I am two out of three out of the keystone species. The African elephant do see dispersion. So does other plants and animals. In fact, other plants and animals do seek this person way more effective and quick. And we see the African elephant as the largest among us. But they are the ones that has many weak spots. Let's take, for example, their trunks. If we take away its trunk, it will straight away die. Therefore, save me, ladies and gentlemen, the white rhinoceros. Thank you very much. All right. What do you feel? What do you feel about coming to this debate tonight? You're one of the youngest, you know. What do you feel? Uh, it's fantastic and I like it and I like it very much. Okay. Since Sam turned on his camera, do you have something to say, Sam? I love your strategy. I think you're just very, very smart. You know, you, you didn't go go at them like one. You went after the species instead. Like, you know, carnivores, you're just trying to divide them and conquer them, make them doubt one another. Really. And I think you have that ability to see the bigger picture and that's a that's an invaluable skill. I think you will go very, very far. Great job, man. Really, really love it. Thank you very much. Thank you, White Rhino. I don't really plan to ask Sam to comment, but I can see he's like waiting to comment. Even from Jasmine just now, you know, he wanted to say something. I'm having notes here. I'm writing down notes of what these guys are saying, my comments and all that. So, yeah. So... I'll give you a good time later, Sam. You can just say whatever you want to say. Thank you, Muhammad Khalif. Thank you, White Rhino. Thank you. You have done your best. And let's move to the ocean again to our Gilnet girl, Vakita. Where is Miss Iman Mutiara from SMK, Raja, Permaisuri by Nun Malaysia? Vakita, are you there? Take it away. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, I should be the one saved from this balloon. Hear me out. First of all, out of all animals here, I am the one who can still survive if I'm placed in a different part of the ocean. My main food source is crustacean, which is abundant throughout the whole ocean, and I can survive in different climate and ocean floor structure. Take the giant panda, the polar bear, the orangutan, for example. If they are put in a different habitat on Earth, they will surely die of inadaptability, making me the one who should be safe for my great adaptability. Second off, we are able to directly contribute to the world of science and technology of which the others are lacking. It's a fact that human advancement in echolocation and sonar submarines are based on our dissertation, capability to use echolocation to communicate among us. Other animals such as Western lowland gorilla, the Sumatran tiger, and the sea turtle does not really give a direct contribution to the world of science and technology that we have today. If a kita can survive a little longer, the echolocation and sonar, and sonar technology in submarines can be lead to a much better advancement to explore the much deeper and narrower ocean floor. With that being said, I, the Vakita, should definitely be safe from my, be safe from this broken balloon. Thank you. Thank you, Miss Vakita, as fiery as she was uh, earlier. All right. Um, thank you so much. How do you feel now that this round is over? 
Um, How do you feel? Happy. Okay. Really? <laughs> okay. <laughs> just don't sink in the ocean. Yeah. I'll call Sam later for to to comment at the end. Thank you, Vikita. Thank you, Iman Mutiara. Let's move on to our Amor Lapet. Okay, Noor Aina Inshira from Bainun, Malaysia. Okay, I'm looking for Aina now. Aina, are you ready? Yes. Okay, take it away. Come on, guys. I am an apex predator, the top animal in the food chain. It is impossible for you guys to kick me out. Plus, I am the key to the health of an ecosystem. Ha! Without me, all of you will die. Consider this. If you kick me out right now, the population of the and both will grow. Listen to what I want to say. Orangutans, gorillas, Sumatran tigers, and even you, African forest elephants, will lose your habitat if you kick me out of this hot, bed, hot air balloon. Without me, you will be eating up forests, making trees and undergrowth disappear. Hence, no habitats for you guys. And my job as an apex predator is to devour you so that you can secure your habitat. As someone who is at the top of the food chain, I will hunt boars for the sake of our health. For your information, boars have diseases and parasites that wildlife, domestic livestock, and humans are vulnerable to. If I were you guys, I wouldn't want to be infected by the disease which has no cure. I want to live a happy life and positively contribute to our ecosystem. Only I can get rid of the deer and boar, being the majestic predator. Other herbivores cannot do so and made it. With all the facts I provided, I, the majestic armor leopard, should critically stay in this hot air balloon for the sake of all animals. Thank you. Thank you, Aina. Thank you so much, Amar Leopard. Still looking gorgeous. Still looking gorgeous. Your makeup, your face painting is still there intact. We all love it. Thank you so much. Um, did you enjoy this balloon debate, uh, Ta uh, Leopard? Yes, I really enjoyed it. Okay. Thank you so much. So we we'll see you later. Samuel Isaiah, our facilitator, will comment on you later. Thank you. Next. Up next, okay, let's listen to our Sumatran Tiger. And of course, it will be delivered by Miss Kumagai Sakura from National Institute Technology of Yubei, uh, Japan. So, Miss Kumagai Sakura, Sumatran Tiger, the screen is yours. Thank you for your presentation, everyone. Mm, uh, I have a question for uh, what line of those? Mm. I do not really understand the difference between you and uh, hippos. In the food chain, the number of you are as many as a hippos. And uh, hippos is not an dangerous species. So what I mean is that um, the food chain and the ecosystem are not broken <laughs> without you. And the impact on nature is small without you. Mm. In addition to that, the same argument is for Gorilla and Ora Utan. Thank you very much. Uh, tell me, tell us, what is your feelings, you know, out of this experience? What do you feel? Uh, mm, I'm very, very nervous. Understood, don't worry. You're a yeah. tiger, okay. Um, yeah. Did you enjoy the process of, you know, learning yeah. and studying of your tiger, of your of the tiger? Yes, yeah. yes. And I think you have done so well. I'm sure Samuel has so much to say after this, okay. And you have no idea. Chatters, our viewers on YouTube channel, they're saying how sweet and uh, gorgeous you look and they enjoy looking at you and listening to you. So good job there, Sakura, okay. You have yeah. really, really done your best. Congrats and congratulations, uh, Japan, for hosting our Olympics this year. Well done. I need to say that out. I need to say that out. Okay. Thank you so much. And next up, okay, we are going to call upon Syed Ahmad Arif from the Malay College, Kuala Kangsa, Malaysia. And 
Said Ahmad Arif is the Saola. Okay, Said, are you ready? Take it away, Saola. Okay, so the giant panda and the polar bear wants me dead. What did I ever do to the to the ecosystem? I don't harm the humans. I don't harm the animals. I actually mind my own business. The giant panda should be thrown out of the balloon. Uh, her situation is no longer dire. There have already been three initiatives that the Chinese government has taken to increase the numbers of pandas, including setting up 13 nature reserves areas for the panda, setting up captive breeding centers, and having strict laws on the poaching of pandas. These initiatives have resulted in the numbers of pandas increasing year by year. In the future, the giant panda will no longer be endangered. The giant panda needs to leave this balloon. Save the Saola, which is in danger of extinction. Next, my rebuttal for the polar bear. The polar bear too needs to be thrown out of the balloon. It can be found in countries like Alaska, Canada, Russia, Greenland. Saolas can only be found in Laos and Vietnam. There are 300 captive polar, bear, polar bears and 26,000 left in this wild. This situation with the polar bear is also not dire. Saulas are becoming extinct. The polar bear is a danger to it. It attacks humans. It is extremely unpredictable and fearless towards people. It is known to sometimes eat humans. What is worse, a mother polar bear or adult polar bear has been known to cannibalize its newborn for food. Why should we save an animal that is responsible for the other death of its own species? Uh, that's all from me. Thank you. How do you feel, Syed, after letting that out? I love your opening. Why everyone is taking me, kind of thing? <laughs> yes, uh, very relieved. I felt uh, very relieved and this was a very enjoyable experience. All right. And I enjoyed looking at you. You know what, Sam? I think if you have a third round, all these animals, I mean these speakers, they'll be standing and yelling at one another, you know? <laughs> yeah, then one, one, one balloon is not going to be enough. <laughs> one be balloon is... <laughs> exactly. We need more balloons. But unfortunately, um, it has to be eliminated. Ooh, they really, this really feels like Squid Game now, yeah? Thank you so much, Said Arif. And let's move on to our last participant, our last contestant of the night. We are coming to the end of our round two. So our final speaker is going to close everything. And I'm sure as the Western Lowland Gorilla, he has so much to say and the energy as well. Take it away, Tron Dang Tree from Long Van Chan High School for the gifted Vietnam. Yes, I'm Mac, your favorite cousin, the Western Lowland Gorilla. And now I'll tell you why I should be staying inside the air balloon. I'm sorry, Sala, but even though you're an endangered species, I doubt that you contribute anything to the forest ecosystem. And since you're not so crowded and very, you should be safe. You shouldn't be safe. And for the orangutan, even though you're one of the keystone species and you're also known as the guardian of the forest, your lifespan is much lower than mine. So I doubt that you'll be able to contribute as much as me. And since you live in Southeast Asian islands and they're slowly sinking, then you won't be able to contribute as much as me. And you should just give your role to me. So save me and I will benefit the forest ecosystem much more than any of the other contestants. And thank you, that is the end of my speech. Tree, well done, well done. Um, can I ask you a question, uh, Tran Dang Tree? Can I ask you a question? When you research yeah. about gorilla, what do you find fascinating about this animal? Well, what's fascinating is that we are one of humans' closest living relatives. So we're like brothers and siblings. Okay. And you wish that you won't be thrown out to die, yes or no? Um, yes. Okay. I wish I was safe. All right. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we have come to the end of our round two of our balloon debate. Round two really flies, okay, because each of them only has two minutes, okay? And I know Sam can't wait to give his comments, his feedback, and 
ladies and gentlemen viewers please listen to me look at me look at me listen to me after this we are going to open the voting links. Three categories. Only three animals out of the 11 animals are going to be saved. Um, students, uh, speakers, can you please turn on your uh, camera now so that the rest of the world can see you? Okay, turn on your camera, everyone. Show your faces so that you know when Sam gives his comments, you can relate to him. Okay, great, amazing. Now listen to me, viewers. Yes. The power of voting is in your hand, but you also need to listen to our facilitator, all right, and see what he has to say because I'm sure even though you have your own favorite and preference and all that, but also vote for the deserving ones. Without further ado, Samuel Isaiah, take it away. So should I go with each participant or just give an overall comment or what, what do we have the time for? Um, I leave it to you. No problem. Five, ten minutes. All right. Let's let's start with Haikal. I think Haikal, you played it really well. I think uh, because you went first, you were smart enough to pay attention to everybody's arguments. And I and I saw that you were meticulous in every detail that they were doing. You mentioned stuff about the panda. You mentioned stuff about the elephant, and sea turtle, everyone. But perhaps that strategy was did not did not work out so well for you towards the end because there was just too much to talk about everyone. So it would have been better if you come up with a more general statement, a general kind of thing to throw a few groups of animals under the bus or off the balloon instead of just going at one, one of them. Because if you've got 11 animals, it's going to be really tough. But I think it showed your skills where you're meticulous and you were able to point out weaknesses in every each and every other participant. Great job on that. Um, Panda, uh, I, I can't believe that the uh, gorilla wanted to throw, throw out a pen, uh, pregnant panda. I, I saw that in the comment, I just laughed out loud. And so, yeah, I think I like uh, uh, you, you went on the offensive for certain animals, but you also smartly used the time to reinforce your own points. I think that was brilliant. So you were not going on the offensive at all times. You picked your battles really well and you, you also looked at this thing that nobody else saw. You saw how you as a panda could contribute to everyone else in the balloon. I think that was brilliant. You know, you said your fur could keep everybody warm and all that. Nobody actually caught on to that. So I think that was really, really smart of you. Um, Ariana, uh, the elephant, I think uh, you managed to look at the future of the ecosystem. I think that was one of your strongest strongest point uh, you said that the garden will not survive without its garden and i think i love that metaphor it's something that i remembered you said that in your in the first round you brought it back again in the second round to really reinforce that idea of the importance of the elephants great job sea turtle i like your balanced views i think among almost everyone else here compared to the other participants i think your views were very balanced you were probably playing it safe you probably don't want to dis or you know disrespect anyone but I think that was a good strategy as well to give balanced views of why you should stay and why some of them should go as well. Very balanced views throughout. Jasmine, the polar bear, I, I liked how you attacked the panda from the beginning. You know, you were very vicious. Uh, I said a bit more earlier on just now to Jasmine. Uh, well done. I think you were trying, but at the same time, I think you were trying to be a bit too nice. But you also came out and said that, you know, you wished everybody could stay in the, in the hot air balloon. But if you watch the script games, if you think like that, you probably would not make it to the end, unfortunately. <laughs> but I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I think I think you brought uh, you brought a very good perspective whereby you know all the animals here are important. They're all part of our ecosystem. They are all important aspects of the ecosystem. And every participant here actually brought up very very valid points. So thank you for pointing that out. Uh, participant six, Khalif, the white rhino. I think yeah, I loved your strategy. I think you had that ability to see the bigger picture. You divided and conquered really, really well. You, yeah, I think that's an invaluable skill. It's something that we all could learn from you as well. Uh, participant seven, Vakita. I think everybody mentioned you about how little your population was, you know, and uh, and how it was so insignificant. And I was looking forward to see how you defended that point, and I think you defended it really, really well. Uh, you did not. You, you made that weak spot into your strength. And uh, whatever the criticism that came from the other participants, it did not deter your spirits as well. And you also smartly enough used the time that you had. I think the majority of the time that you had, you used it to strengthen your points instead of focusing so much on the criticism of others. Great strategy. Um, 
Aina, I liked how you used the feedback that I gave you as well. I think it was a better, more polished performance. You add, add, added a bit of emotions into it. There were parts that you looked really sad as well, but I really loved your energy. I think with that balance of that energy, with that balance of your different types of expressions, it really shined through. Uh, Sakura, I think the point that you said, I think was very relevant, you know, that the food chain of the ecosystem is not broken with the white rhino. And that was like, bam, you know, it's a good knockout punch to the white rhino. I really like that, that you think. And I think uh, you did not focus, you focused on your strengths a lot. And you made your points really clear and you made sure everybody knew that these are your points. Mm -hmm. I think that was, that was a great way to end round two. Uh, Said. Yeah, how dare you throw out the pregnant panda? But uh, I think that was that was brilliant of you. You know, uh, you showed that the uh, as as docile as the Asian unicorn looks, as 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 cute as it looks, it also has a vicious side. And I I commend you for that. I think great points you brought up to the end as well. Um, our last participant, I think he started off sounding like he was gonna like rap or something. I really like that. There was like a there was like a rhyme and rhythm to his words. So I really, really like that he brought a different perspective. I, I think that um, Tran, Tran ending ending the session today, I think it shows how diverse the skills of each participants here are. And each of them were actually playing to their skills and to their strengths. So that's up to you, Tran. I think that's all from me, Aisha. Overall, I really enjoyed the arguments. I think uh, the participants here also showed their diversity, how they, are, they adapted when they are being attacked, how they displayed their mm -hmm. comments really well in round one, how they defended their ideologies really well as well. Some of them were really, really strategic. I think I had off to them. I think when I was their age, I was just like this dumb kid running around playing football. Never, not, not as polished as they are. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's great to see that at such a young age, they are very mature and polished in their thoughts. So, yeah, amazing, amazing participants we have here today. Thank you very much, Samuel Isaiah. I'm very glad that you enjoyed the debate as much as I did. I think everyone would agree with us, yes, Sam? Um, let's just take a look at the chat in our YouTube comment sections. Um, those who are chatting, those who are viewing now, can you please tell us what you think? Oh, they're all asking for links. They're asking for, you know, they're ready to vote, ready to go. Okay, I can see that. And I think no matter who wins, who stays standing at the end of this, okay, who remains in the hot air balloon by the end of this, everyone did amazing. You should be very proud of yourself, okay? And also to the teachers and their coaches for working on them, you know, having all these face paintings and also sketches and also whatever background that you have at the back of you. So you've done amazing, all of you. Should be very proud. And even prouder, I would say, you all come from different countries. So you are here meeting tonight talking about an important theme, endangered animals and species. Every animal mentioned here tonight is just as important. But of course, we spice things up, right? Okay, so ladies, gentlemen and viewers, okay, let's get ready. Okay, now I'm just looking at my team first. Team, are we ready to uh, send the voting link? What do you think? Um, let me see. Let me check with my team. Oh, yes. My crew says yes. Okay, viewers, this is the most awaited time. Before we share with you the voting links, yeah, let me go through one time again. Can we please uh, pin and show our audience, yeah, our viewers? The first category, okay, the first one to be saved, the category is the most convincing speech. Okay, remember, it is a speech. You have to recall what happened in the first round, in the second round, which speech that makes you engage and you are convinced with their arguments, all right? So this is the most convincing speech. Again, I know everyone... Um, has their own favorite and all that, but also do think, do consider speakers who deserve to win. Okay, can we, all right, this is going to be, uh, we, when we post you the link in the YouTube comment section, when we post you the link, we are going to give you about one minute of voting. So now, okay, before we post the link, go and get as many people as possible to vote, all right? People to watch, people to vote, okay? And um yes animals you can vote for yourself as well i know you have your second third device with you i know that so 
go ahead. You know, voting is everyone's right. Okay, so you have only one minute to vote. We Once we give you the link, we will put up a countdown. By the end of the one minute, we will tally the votes. We'll uh, we will show to the audience who is the winner of the most convincing speech. Are you ready? Team, please post the link in our YouTube comment section. Yes, the link is posted there. Click on the link. Click on the link in the YouTube comment section to vote for your for the most convincing speech. Okay, on YouTube now, time is up, voting time is up. So, um, my technical crew is looking at it and, you know, counting votes and all. Um, Iman, uh, sorry, yes, Dilha, yes, Dilha. I'm looking at it. All right. Yes, good. I'm looking at it. Surprisingly, I do have the name for the winner. Okay. But before that, let me send the name to our technical crew first. Oh, okay. okay, 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 okay. I should know first yeah, because I need to announce. All right, all right. So the most convincing speech, yeah? Dilha, this one, the one that you put in our group, is that the one? Yes, yes, correct. Okay. Are you ready to so share? I'll close the voting. I'll close the voting and I'll share you the visa. All right. You. Are you going to share screen now? Yes. Okay. So you want to announce it first? Um, I think you share first. Okay. Okay, I'll share. I'll share it to you guys. Wait, yeah. Is your your hearts are beating hard? I guess the most convincing speech of our balloon debate 2021 goes to goes to Iman Mutiara Vakita from SMK Raja Permaisuri Bainun, Malaysia. The most convincing speech. Okay, um, Dilha. Tichaisha, Tichaisha. Yes. Tichaisha, there is, there is someone still voting. I've closed the voting and the winner is Umi Kalida from Genius Pinta. I'm truly sorry. Maybe the technical things happened. Okay, okay. So now the winner of the most yes, convincing I'm truly sorry. is... Umi yes. Khalida. Umi Khalida. Yes. Okay. Technical crew, can you please change that? Umi Khalida from College Genius at Pinta Negara, the giant panda. Okay. Yes. Okay, give a clap. Um, Dilha. Sorry, sorry for the inconvenience. Yes. Can you please um read out for us or not so that we can you can tell us the votes? How does it look like? Because it's a bit too small for me to see. Oh, so basically, um, um, Umi Khalida won 94 votes and Mutiara from Bainon won 89 votes. Just a little bit uh, different. Okay, there. and the third oh. place was? The third place is? The third place is Sai from MCKK, which is Sola. Okay, all right. Okay, good, good. Remember, this is not really a competition competition, but it's just things to spice up. So congratulations to the winners and also the top three winners. So uh, we have only one actually. So one stay alive in the hot air balloon, who is Umi Khalida College Genius at Pinta Negara Giant Panda. So uh, they did not uh, succeed in throwing you out, yeah, Giant Panda. Okay, let's go to the next one. Ooh, now I can see numbers of people who are also increasing. You have to vote. 
for your favorite speaker to stay alive for your animal for the animal you wish to stay alive all right so we are now putting in the link in the uh, youtube comment section second award category which is the most creative speech before that let's go let's take a look what is the description for the most creative speech okay so this is also very interesting which speech that is delivered that was delivered earlier shows you know the highest creativity what's most creative so please recall um and try and give it to the, the speaker that is the most deserving okay there are many areas and criteria for being creative okay are we ready to post the link team yes yes okay so um technical crew can you please post our link to the most creative speech okay is it posted yes the most creative speech link is there and we will keep posting okay we will keep posting and here goes the countdown please vote for your favorite speaker the most creative speech Okay, Dilha, are you there? Yeah. Okay. I'm submitting the name to our technical crew. I I really hope this is not a mistake again. I'm truly sorry for before this, but I finalized the vote. Wait, wait, you can wait. See it um, in the is the is the link closed? Yes, I closed the vote already. Okay. So, is this the real name now that comes in to us? Yes, I've double checked and it is Okay, okay now can you let please? me share the screen okay right right get ready for the most creative speech okay the second or the next surviving animal of the hot air balloon goes to <laughs> technical uh this okay let's see what appear what is appearing caliph mckk the white rhino am i right Am I right, Bilha? Yes. Yes. Give a clap, you. Give yes. A clap. Ah, okay. MCKK, Kalif, the Yay. white rhino. Oh, okay. I know you're excited. Okay. So that is a winner or the second animal who survives the hot air balloon. Can you please read to me who has the second highest vote? The second higher, uh, higher vote goes to Vakita from Iman Mutiara. Mm -hmm. And the third one is Aina Inshira, which is the M Leopard okay so that's the second and the third one all right okay so close competition as well i believe okay yes, close competition. all right thank you very very much uh, dilha now ladies and gentlemen let's get ready for our third category and sam uh you are not let off the hook yet after we have announced all the what the viewers have voted we want to know from you as the facilitator as the you know more professional with, with professional judgment who would you choose to remain in the hot air balloon at the end of this yeah okay all right okay so um the third one is personal favorite Ooh, this is getting even um 
what I say. Um, he said, okay, can we can we take that away? Okay. So personal favorite, simply as simple as viewers' personal preference. So we're going to have a lot of people voting and rooting for your own student, for your own friend, for your own family, and for your own country, of course. So let's just take a look who is the winner or the third and the last animal surviving the hot air balloon. Team, can you please post the link in our... Please post the link in our comment section. Okay. Get everyone to vote, please. Get everyone. This is personal favorite. Personal favorite. Come on. Okay. Let's bring up the countdown. Okay, Dilha, don't close it yet. Give them some time to vote, yeah? Don't close it yet. Don't close it yet. Personal favorite, let's give them a few more seconds to vote. Personal favorite, the last animal surviving the hot air balloon. Don't close the link yet. Keep on get uh, accepting. Okay. Are votes still coming in, Dilha? Uh, Miss Aisha, you forgot to turn your mic on. Oh, 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 oh. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, Dilha, Dilha. Yes, don't do, Okay, don't close it yet. Have you closed it? Yes, I just closed the voting line. Okay. Um, are, are votes, I mean, the votes all are there already by now? Yes, are there already? You want me to share screen first okay, or wait, you wait. want to announce it first? Um, oh. Have you sent it to... Yes, I sent it already. Okay, can you please share the... um, What do you call that? Your screen. Okay, let me share it to you guys. Okay. Personal favorite. Personal favorite. Oh, I know you all are hoping for a place to, you know, to survive. I know I understand that feeling, but yeah, we only need three. I know I can see it on the sound last face. Okay, so Dilha, the winner. Okay, the winner for personal favorite category or the third animal surviving the hot air balloon goes yeah. to. Goes to. Vakita Iman Mutiara from Raja Pramasuri by known Malaysia. Okay, Vakita. Yes. That is right, correct? Yes, that's uh, right. Vakita uh, got 106 votes. And the second goes to Umi Kalida from Genius at Pinta, which is the, the giant panda. And the number three for today is Sai from MCKK, which is a cola. Okay, all right. We accept all this. Honestly, um, for these uh, three categories as well as the surviving animals, as I said, hot air balloon is about um approval from the audience. How the audience pick you and choose you? Yes, I understand. Um, it also depends on the number of crowd that we are able to draw from your circle. Okay, but that is why I would like to invite Mr. Samuel Isaiah. He listened to you very well throughout from the first round to the second round. He commented on you. And I believe I want to hear what about his choice, his personal choice for the most convincing speech, the most creative speech, and also personal favorite. That would be his favorite, yeah? Okay, Sam, please enlighten us. Uh, could, could it be the, the individuals that have won themselves? 
Yeah, sure, no problem. It's yours. It's your own. So it's uh, convincing, creative, and personal boring. favorite. Personal favorite. Wow, this is tough. <laughs> this is really, really tough. Uh, uh, I think I'll start with my personal favorite. Yeah, I think my personal favorite would definitely would be Umi Kalida. I think uh, uh, she she had a good blend of good points, good strategy. What she was creative in her presentation, you know. The metaphors that she used, she played around with her words so much. She was very strategic in how she addressed the whole thing. So, my personal favorite, meaning in every aspect, she was really good, is Ubi Kalida. Okay. Um, with the mood, the second one is creative, right? So, yes, creative. Huh. I think the most creative one definitely has to go to Khalif. Um, Khalif brings uh, a, a different flair. Um, you know, he used visual aids. He used his background. He used music. Um, he, he, I, I like how he, he protected his voice really, really well. So, yeah, I think most creative one is Khalif. And the most convincing one. Oh, <laughs> just give me a minute. <laughs> I'm looking at my notes. Uh, right. uh, it's tough, yeah? It's tough, right? No, so it's tough. It's really, really tough. Oh, it, so luckily, it's not a real, real competition. It's a competition for fun. Yeah. Yeah. I think the most convincing one for me... Can, can I have two convincing ones? Sure. <laughs> yes, you can have two. Go yeah. ahead. Tell us. I, I think I would like to go with Jasmine because I felt that um, uh, Jasmine had a way with her words. Uh, she she there, there was not much flair in what she was doing. But it felt like she was just very genuine with what she was trying to say. I felt I felt that it came, it came from within. She was having a conversation with me, so that convinced me. You know, I think uh, uh, that that yes, the facts were all there, the figures were all there, the content was really good as well. But convincing wise, I think uh, she really convinced me. So I would love to save the ball of else. Uh, the second most convincing one, I think, goes to. Uh, Iman Mutiara, I think, uh, because uh, she was probably had she had like a, everybody knew her weakness, everyone was going for that. Yes, she, she defended it really well. She knew how to, to 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 ignore the haters, as they would say, go for her strengths, focus on her arguments really well. It did not show on her face. I think if if I were her and everybody would just say. Oh no, your speech is so small, you don't deserve to live in this balloon, blah, blah, blah. I would probably be demotivated, but she did not show that. She was convinced throughout, and, and that's why I was convinced personally. So yeah, um, Iman and Jasmine. Okay, thank you so much, Sam. I really, really agree with you. In fact, um, I can read from here, okay? We have our, sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, I wanted to pin... Um, all of you are winners. Okay, I'm looking for it just now. Somebody said all of you are winners. Ambar, oh, yeah, here. All of you are winners. Ambar Bell. Okay, so she's a teacher actually from uh, Indonesia. So all of you are winners. Exactly true. But then when Sam, you announced, you know, your choices and also who you felt that uh, fit the descriptions, I think it was not very far from what the audience and the viewers have chosen. Correct? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. So they've chosen Giant Panda, White Rhino, as well as Vikita. And I like it when you said that everybody knows Vakita knows she was like at the losing end you know with her weaknesses and being small and very rare but somehow she managed to like yeah yeah come up from the ocean and <laughs> fight her way through as well as other animals all of you did amazing if I would love to give a special shout out to our leopard I think she's like the most well prepared you mm. know she the visual element uh, the gunshot at the beginning you know, I think, yeah, every one of you had something going on yes. really, really well. It's really tough to choose, but yeah, I think at the end of the day, someone's got to go off the balloon, right? So, yeah. unfortunately, this is well, yeah. But good job, everyone. Really, really enjoy this session. Okay, I know you all are muted uh, students. Can you just like give a clap so that we all can see you clapping from the Google Meet? Okay, and I'm going to unpin Mr. Samuel Isaiah so that everybody can take a look at you. Please stand on your camera. Let us all take a last look at you. You are looking so beautiful with everything. You know, uh, I am so proud of each and every one of you. Now, let me just announce here to all participants, speakers of our balloon debate international uh, International uh, Collaborative Event, yeah, our our program for tonight. Each of you will be getting, will be receiving an e-certificate and we are sending some tokens of love 
from Malaysia. We'll post it to you. Just wait for it, okay? We'll be collecting your addresses and also emails and phone numbers. We are sending some love from Malaysia. Remember that this is not like a real, real competition. The main idea is to get everyone together to talk about endangered animals. And can I just ask, out of curiosity, in your countries, in your countries, English language, is that your second language or third language or fourth language? Can you please let, tell me? For Malaysians, of course, English is our second language. Indonesia? Second. Vietnam? Second. Okay. What about Japan? Sakura? Second language, third language? Can you please tell us? A mute. You are you're muted, my dear. Can you like uh yes, unmute yourself? In Japan, English language is a second. Is she showing two fingers or three fingers? I can't see. I, I think she's showing two fingers. Two fingers, second <laughs> yeah. language. Okay. So ladies and gentlemen, students, English language is not our first language. It's not our, we are not native speaker of the language. So definitely we, as you know, as your teachers, we understand that it takes, you know, a lot of practice as well for you to actually use, you know, good English, correct English when delivering your speeches and you are in the process of learning. At the same time, this theme, yeah, really is very strong for all of us viewers as well. So again, congratulations. Thank you so much. Um, balloon debaters, okay, thank you so much, Mr. Samuel Isaiah. Any last words, Sam, to our viewers before I close our balloon debate for tonight? It's already 10 something. Well, I'd like to congratulate everyone. I think it's an outstanding job. You know, I, I spending my two hours with you was was so worth it. I really enjoyed it. So, do invite me again, Aisha. If this happens as a yearly event, we'll love to join you guys again and see amazing and be inspired by them. Thank you very, very much, Sam. Um, and thank you, everyone. Don't, don't, don't go anywhere. Just stay in the Google Meet for a while. I'll come back to you. Let me just say goodbye to everybody. So, um, ladies and gentlemen, um, all of you on YouTube channel live right now, I thank you for being with us for like two hours, more than two hours. I think we had fun. I apologize for any shortcomings, for any problems uh, that happened throughout our organization, our balloon debate, to all teachers, coaches, who took part, who were with us from beginning of our balloon debate. I really thank you from the bottom of my heart. And I think by known really, uh, we are very inspired by your commitment. We are very, very happy with your, when you embrace and when you accept our invitation. Thank you so, so very much for being with us. Um, I'm very, very sorry for any shortcomings. I know at the beginning we had, you know, the, the speakers were, there were echoes and all. We were like trying to adjust because making it, live streaming it from Google Meet to YouTube, uh, it, it, that happened. So we also learn in the process. Yeah? When we did our rehearsal, uh, when we tried out, it was like quite all right because at that moment, the students, the speakers just spoke a little. They did not reveal their whole speech. So when they actually spoke the whole entire speech, then that's when we detected the problem as well. So thank you so much, Indonesia. Thank you so much, Vietnam. Thank you so much, Japan. Thank you so much, Malaysia. I hope you have enjoyed this balloon debate as much as we did and we hope to see you again in the future we love you thank you very much this is a great learning process we'll be sending e-certificates we'll be sending love tokens of love from malaysia to all participants and to those three animals who survived the hot air balloon congratulations you all did amazing and yes all of you are winners with that assalamualaikum goodbye good night see ya